In the PDF of this course, I make the claim that a literature note is a tool for understanding. So when you take literature notes, you're testing your understanding as you go along and you're asking questions of the material as you go through it. Now, this is relatively, um, it's a relatively different concept from what you normally consider reading. Literature notes are kind of, uh, they're thought of very much associated with college classes and that you're trying to take notes to study and to pass an exam. But they are actually your best method of understanding. There are a variety of methods uh, to the literature note, which is very confusing when you first start to begin this because Lumen himself has a very uh, distinct style of taking notes, a very compressed, where he just basically says on page X is Y and then the page number. Uh, but that's come with years and years of experience, I would imagine, for his ability to be able to condense enormous amounts of information into kind of a maximum or a sentence to remind him of the ideas on a particular page. Another version of a literature note is an, indi uh, is an index of ideas. There we go. Uh, and that is basically where you jot down the idea that you had in the book and you write the page number next to it, very similar to Lumen's method. And then there's a more extensive method um, that Sanke in the book, the, the author of How to Take Smart Notes, he kind of pokes fun of and jabs at the SQX method. So X, X is the number of R's there are. So a couple of them that I mentioned in the PDF version is the SQ3R and the SQ5. And these are methods um, to help you to help you write literature notes that extract out as much information from the literature that you're trying to get, um, tr that you're trying to consume. So if we look those up. So we have the SQ3R reading method. Let's start with a five. And we'll just go to DuckDuckGo. So right here, this first, this top one is a really good summary page of it. So let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see. So you can see the S stands for survey. So you're going to basically do an, an inspectional read of whatever the section is. I think this is, yeah, by section and section to section, ch chapter to chapter, you will do an inspection. You'll kind of look at the key phrases, the bold parts of it, the charts, the graphs, try to get yourself acquainted with the literature that you're trying to consume, what the general ideas might be. Uh, and then you start to ask questions of it, like what does this particular term mean? What does this implication have, etc. Then you begin to read and you break it down into 20 minute increments, typically by section by section, by section again. And then you, you respond, you respond to the questions that you asked. You record those, you recite it to yourself, and you, you review. So this is a method of study, uh, and it's rather intensive. I started using this when I first, or when I started to reread uh, How to Take Smart Notes for the fourth time, and it was effective because it helped me understand how I should be approaching literature. But as you can imagine, that really puts a hamper on how much information you consume. And it also, in the whole overarching philosophy of smart notes, puts too much emphasis on the literature note itself, which in the smart notes workflow, the literature note is really a prop or a prompt for the permanent notes. Um, so it is a tool for understanding, but it is also you also you have to approach it with the lens of it's only a means to an end in terms of writing the permanent notes because those notes are the ones that will remain and in, in connect in your slipbox and they'll build up the lattice work of your mental models and your knowledge. So if we look at the SQ3, three R reading method. We'll take a look at this top link from Weber. Again, make it bigger. It's basically just a shorter version, and that's kind of what Sanke in the book was um, poking fun at, is like it's going to be the SQ8R or the 12R, and it can infinitely expand in the number of ways, the number of R's that you can use to review and recite uh, the literature. So I would suggest that you try a, you know, a variety of these. And the other thing that I would say is the book that you're reading what kind of the literature that you're consuming, whether it's a book or an ebook or even a course, the difficulty of that material should determine how you take your literature notes. You're going to have way more literature notes if it's something that is a lot more difficult to consume. Um, and one thing to realize is some books, they're difficult enough or they're new enough in your area of knowledge that you need to uh, read them first all the way through to acquire maybe 40 or 50 percent of the knowledge that is necessary for you to get to the 60 and 70 percent on your second pass um, but literature notes can definitely help you get there and this sq3r method it's worth experimenting at least to get an idea of um, how much you can extract from information and you'll be amazed at how much you retain from 
using this particular note method, note taking method. But again, to reiterate, it is uh, very time consuming and it will distract or take time away from doing the permanent notes. So let's just walk through a couple of the literature notes that I took for how to take smart notes. And just to give you a feel for uh, Lumen's style of taking literature notes. So let's just assume that you are reading the book, How to Take Smart Notes, and you want to begin to take your literature notes in Obsidian. How I would approach that and how I've been doing that is you go to the reference folder. Well, first let's click New Note and we'll say How to Take Smart Notes. Um, there are a number of videos out there already that cover how to make a beautiful literature note and you can embed the image and you can do all this fancy stuff and have all the reference material there. I will provide links for that and um, give you access to that, but I don't really follow that. I think it's too too much work. Um, you can template it and all that good stuff, but I, I find it to be a distraction from the actual reading and digesting of the information. So what I tend to do is I just create a note with the name of the book and if I have a topic or something like that that is already the title of the book, um, the Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport is a good example. I have uh, Digital Minimalism as a topic name, and so it conflicts with the note named of that. So I just put the subtitle in the book. So my reference notes for books are either just the title or the title and the subtitle combined. So now that we have this note, we'll just drag it into the reference folder. Again, we want to keep the different types of notes separated. Uh, in the physical version, those would be in different slip boxes. You'd have a reference slip box and you'd have a slip box for your permanent notes. Uh, and then your fleeting notes would be in a notebook somewhere. So they would be physically separated. The best we can do in the digital version is to put them in folders so that they are not uh, intermingled. So we have the how to take smart notes in here. I will just paste in a couple of the notes that I took while I was reading uh, how to take smart notes. So the first literature note is writing permanent notes is the process of abstracting ideas. That was from page 123. So if you want to take uh, the book, if you have the book open, if you have a Kindle or whatever, you can open it up, you can read that page, and you can see if you can find how I came up with that particular idea or that particular abstraction of the knowledge that's in there. Uh, and then usage of the slipbox trains effective thinking. So this is from page 125, just a few pages later. Um, and so the, the whole process of using the slot box is actually helping you um, from psycho, uh, psychologically backed research um, that it's training you to be more effective in your thinking because writing is thinking. And when you constantly are consuming information and writing what you're learning from that, you are you're learning to think better. Uh, and that is, that is a great benefit, obviously, of the system and why I've put so much time and effort into it. Uh, the next one is sequences compensate for a lack of hierarchy, hierarchical order. There we go. Uh, trouble with big words. So what that means is, you know, like most note-taking systems, they have kind of this top-down hierarchy from an archive, right? You have your main topic and you have your subtopics. Kind of look like you would go in a bookstore and you'd have it all organized um, by that type of information. The sequences inside of Smart Notes, which, which we'll talk about later, they allow you to cluster notes and ideas together in a way that uh, compensates for not having that order. Because if you can imagine everything was just completely flat, you would have no way to organize. So Smart Notes is very unique in the sense, at least with the organization of the slipbox, that the organization evolves and surfaces itself versus you having to put in all the, basically deciding on that order up front. So that's where that came from. And that came from page 107. So these are three literature notes that I have just jotted down. Uh, and that's pretty much it uh, as far as literature notes are con concerned. Let's review PDF, see if I'm forgetting anything. So I guess, yeah, the last thing that we'll note is uh, note taking is also a way for you to present, prevent yourself from becoming overwhelmed by prematurely translating everything to permanent notes. A big stumbling block that I had when I first started was like, oh, I love this idea of notes. I love this uh, concept of permanent notes and capturing every single piece of information that I consume, which didn't yield well for my productivity, as you might imagine. So like, pretty much any sentence that I came across that I thought was awesome, I would try to convert into a permanent note. And it just has meant to many iterations of, <laughs> of my vault and obsidian being completely started over from scorched earth. Um, and that's it. So now we'll move on to taking permanent notes in the next video.